So what kind of boat do you have and who are you? Well, this is a Pacific Seacraft 31 and I'm Rick Pat And I'm Nellis. Cindy. This is Cindy. And uh, we um, bought this boat in 2010 and um, it was basically a shell of a boat at the time we bought it. And so we've pretty much either installed it all ourselves or overseen the installation of everything that you see on the boat. Um, and we started uh, cruising full time in 2014. Left San Francisco when went down, went down the coast. Sorry, there's a radio. I uh, went down the coast of, of uh, California and, and joined up with the Baja Haha, and uh, then uh, stayed down in Mexico for about three years, loving it, just absolutely adoring it. And then this last March, we left on March 23rd. And made the crossing. And made the crossing. So here we are. How many days was the crossing? 27. 27 wonderful days, I'm sure. Yeah, well, it was exciting. We had we had some uh, ups and we had some downs, but it was it was overall a, a life changing experience. So. So why did I want to do a tour of the Pacific Seacraft 31? Because of one number, 31. Rick and Cindy made a 27-day crossing from Mexico to French Polynesia. And I wanted to see how they did it with a lot of extra cool change. The Pacific Seacraft 31 was designed by Bill Creelock. Creelock designed his sailboats to arrive safely and all the occupants to arrive in comfort. Bill was inducted into the American Sailboat Hall of Fame for the design of the Creelock 37 with 362 built. The Pacific Seacraft 31 was designed as the little sister to the Creelock 37 and there are about a hundred little sisters out there. Well, let's take a look at your boat. Okay. okay. So we've got, so up here, we've got a uh, monitor wind vane, which uh, was real helpful getting us across. And of course you have to assemble that There's, there, before it... <laughs> there, is a, there is a piece that goes up in the air, yeah, that's right. taken off right now, we just don't leave it on. The feather there, and then the, the uh, paddle goes down in the water. And we added this little, uh, I call it a margarita seat. In Mexico, before we right before we left, it's the uh, it's the luxury seat and very nice for. So you uh, added lines. that in uh, Mexico. Uh -huh. Yeah. I always like to hear what uh, what you paid for that. Oh, it was a combination. Of oh that shoot! And, uh, well, we did that, and we did uh, some work on this arch and a pole for our wind generator and a solar platform, and I think all together it was fifteen hundred dollars. Something That's really, really cheap. Yeah. 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 Very yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they used real metal too. They did. <laughs> 316 or 314? 316. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And what else can we show you back here? Uh, we have an um, autopilot that's um, underneath the, um, the aft lazarette. Um, and, uh, and then we have. Does it steer to wind? No. No. We, we, we haven't used it that way. Um, and I mean, and uh, I don't know that that I don't know that that function. It's more. No. That's what we use our uh, our Charlie wind our wind vane yeah. for because yeah. that's exactly what Charlie does, right? right. You know, Seriously but um, but that's not usually our objective. Um, and uh, yeah, we have Raymarine, very easy to understand. Um, uh, we've got. Uh, um, uh, a radar and it, it's everything it, to me it's it's a simple 
design, not so complicated like B and G that you can't ever figure out how to use it. This, I think, works really well. What kind really of maps well. do you have? What kind of maps? Navionics. Navionics. Uh huh. Okay. Well, so far we've been just using, relying on Navionics and 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 paper charts, and yeah. it works pretty well. So this is our this is this is our womb. This is where we stay nice and cozy when there's a big storm out there. Um, and uh, I think if you start with the bow, um, we have a projector here, which comes down like this. We and we plug it in, and it shines onto this projection screen, which rolls down. Nice. And, and so at night we have you know a nice widescreen movie theater for for ourselves we we um we hook it up with our stereo so the so the sound comes out of the stereo it works really well and this is um one of the neat features of pacific sea craft is on um, the 31 is that this little table slides out so when you don't want it you can put it out of the way it has a little latch right there so when you're underway the legs don't collapse and fall down um so that's kind of fun and then these Settees uh, have another two feet of leg room if you take this cushion out. So I have made uh, leak cloths that come up and hook up to here and on both sides. So this becomes our our two beds while we're sleeping underway. We each have our own. And both of them have the the, the, the space. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Nice. So yeah, it it works out really well. You know. And when we're not underway, then we have a nice custom mattress here that we sleep together on. But while we're underway, we can't be together anyway because because uh, one's got to be at the helm. <laughs> we don't even so, go down go downstairs most of the days. When don't we're, you? We just sleep underway. on deck. Oh, oh, yeah. Because well, we're pretty much protected uh -huh. there. You know, yeah. we'll just go down to go to the bathroom or you know, pick up some water, but we don't even go downstairs. We just huh. sleep on deck. Huh. Yeah, that would be nice. We're, we're not quite as space. sheltered, you know, in our in our cockpit. So sometimes I need to get out of the, the wind and the air and the, the weather. So this has been really comfortable for us. And then here we have our nap table and uh, under it is our refrigerator. So, um, and this is goes all the way down to the to the soul pretty much so we have a lot of, of, storage a lot of stuff space. in there yeah we have a lot of storage space that's the top shelf and then there's a whole other layer beneath that our we did have everything held up really well under the crossing except one day it was day 13 and it was really rolly and i was having trouble balancing and i had we just caught a fish and I just filleted it down here and cut it up and had it all ready for sashimi and I'd placed the 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 um, soy sauce and the wasabi up here. We were all set to go and I was carrying the plate of the little cut up pieces of fish up the companionway and a, and a wave hit from this side and I fell down and banged against this corner. So, so I, once again, so okay, start again. And here I am with this plate of sashimi still in my hand and I'm going up the stairs and, and up the companionway and we get hit from the other side. And I go back down the companionway and this- you Hit on this side. Yeah, but we had a door to our head that was propped open with a fulcrum right on this point. So when I landed here, well, the door shattered lengthwise. Oh no. So now we have a little token of, of Polynesia here as a door instead. It looks nice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so that's our head. And then Rick can tell you all about the amazing electronics he's got down there. What do you got down there? Rick? Oh, so we've got um, house on. batteries in the back. What kind of batteries you got? So those are Odysseys, AGMs. And they're a special footprint. They're tall and long, so that they take up half the footprint of the same size um, in a standard format, right? So these are 450 amp hours. Um, 12 volt house battery set, 12 volts, yeah. And um, we had to because the weight used to be the batteries on this boat were all in the lazarette 
out here, but it was just 200 amp hours worth of batteries for both starter and house. So we, to move them there, we had to change the center of, uh, center of gravity on them. So I had to build up the deck, put them in the center, uh, reroute all of the electrical distribution back through here. And um, of course, so we've got solar. Controllers for each. We've got controllers for each panel. We've got uh, eight panels. We've got about 300 watts of solar. And then we have 400 watts uh, on a wind turbine. And um, how much do you think you actually get from your wind turbine? The wind turbine? Yeah. Here it's been great, but um, oh, it's for starters. You have to get 15 knots apparent before you before you can get usable power. But um, we'll pull 10 10 to 15 amps out of it on a good on a good, good windy wind. day. Yeah, yeah. What it, what I see is in the middle of the night if we haven't had sun all day long and um, in the middle of the night at anchor we're going to have to turn off the, the refrigerator because our power is, is going too low and but if we've got some wind man everything's running fine so um, I think of it as a godsend because I want that refrigerator yeah, it, makes, it makes a big difference yeah and then uh, so other systems we also got to <laughs> believe it or not in this small boat we have a spectral water maker and that's uh, back here how many gallons or liters per hour do you make? Well, it's supposed to make 10, 10 an hour. It makes more like about seven and a half. And uh, <laughs> it's hard to see, but uh, kind of storage. But we've got- uh, It's a component uh, system, so you- Component system, so it's loaded back here and on here. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a Spectra. It works, it's been uh, really reliable. Does a good job. And pretty much we've, that's, we've dedicated that closet to it. And are you running that, you know, five hours a day, five, six hours a day? No. No, no. Every, yeah, every fourth or fifth day we'll run yeah. it for maybe four or five hours. We, you know, we have most. 65 gallons on board, so yeah. that'll last us normally a week anyway. And what about a generator? Or, no generator. Um, All we've got is, small a, inverter. is a little 200 watt inverter over there that um, you can barely see it. Here, let me see. We just use Rick's, that for computers. Rick's hat is covering it. But <laughs> this little tiny thing um, oh, yeah. works just fine to charge up our computers, to power our, our projector when we're watching the movies. And um, so, for, and even you've used it for your soldering yeah. iron, yeah. yeah we'll so it's it's it works okay. Although we're thinking about getting a little bit bigger one, you know. So what did you used to do, engineer? Um, well, I used to work for my last job was with AT and T, and I was in public safety. We did uh, um, tech support for um, uh, nine one one call centers um, throughout the U.S. So. Rick wanting to show off his engine room. Oh, that's a... Well, you can get all the way around that puppy. Yeah, you can. So that's a, um, a Yanmar 3GM30. So 30 horsepower? And yeah, 30 horsepower. And it's got an upgraded um, alternator. We've got a 120 amp alternator. And went to a serpentine belt. Um, and uh, different uh, pulley faces. And works works pretty good. Yeah, good access. Um, good running little engine. And I must say that that's one clean engine room you got going there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we try. And it's, yeah, it's, it's real easy to maintain and keep clean, so. That's it. Best thing about our boat is that it's manageable with two people. I'm never ever intimidated by the size of the mainsail or anything else. We, the two of us can handle it. Um, and we don't have any electric winches or anything else, and yet um, we've never found, knock on wood, been in a situation where the sail has been out of control and we haven't been able to, to deal with it, no matter how, how big the winds are. So I think that, to me, is the advantage of, of our boat. The disadvantage, the biggest disadvantage, um, is, is the size. Um, in the sense that it, it we can't ca there, we can't carry a lot of weight. Not only do we not have room, but the the water le line you know, is is 
is we're, we're deeper and deeper in the water and just like everybody else they <laughs> always want to raise their water line That's yeah right. well yeah but it's it, it's it's a it's not just a, a interesting discussion if um on, on this boat it's a really serious issue for example i if i were to change any anything in the design of this boat i would have raised that would have had the sinks less deep because we're getting to the point where the water is coming back into the sink because the water line at the ocean is higher than the bottom of the sink. I think what is happening is your boat's talking to you saying, no, I don't <laughs> want any more. You think? Well, yes, that's true. I mean, it's been talking to us about that for a long time, but but nevertheless, we have to, you know, we could have been without a water maker and without a, uh, a wind generator and we could have been the parties, you know, but we're not. We're older, we're, we, we want, we like our comforts. So it's, it's, it's not like we're carrying, you know, uh, um, uh, paddle boards and kayaks and bicycles and all that kind of stuff. We've just got the basic necessities, but of a good boat with, with top of the line, um, you know, essential components that make it easier for us to sail. That's so was there anything missing when you made your crossing? 27 days is a long time, so anything you missed during the crossing? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, food we were covered. We had plenty of food when we got when we got to the other side. I was really happy with could all. Could have the, had more beer. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yeah, could have yeah, had yeah, more you, beer. You could have <laughs> had more beer. Um, but uh, and and yeah, and mineral water. I, yeah. I would have liked more mineral water. Um, and and speaking of which, that would have been a nice thing to have as a soda stream because I do drink a lot of mineral water, and that that would have been nice. Um, in terms of what was the most essential part, a thing that we had in the galley that we, we couldn't have, that became really useful that we couldn't have lived without? The AeroPress. Oh. Our coffee maker. Was, we have a, have you ever heard of an AeroPress? No. It's a real small, it's a type of French press, but it works really well, you know, small spaces and, and uh, makes a cup at a time. Rick's our coffee very maker. Handy. So, so uh, I rely on him to take care of that every day. So that day. was that was essential for yeah. watches. Yeah. Uh, but you know, there was there's a lot of good information out there about how to provision for long passages. Beth Leonard and 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 a, a bunch of other sources, but I think her article is really really good. It's about provisioning without refrigeration, which we have refrigeration, but to tell you the truth. Um, after a while, I was just uh, after uh, you know the f we don't have a, a freezer, so after the pre-prepared foods that we made dinners we'd made were gone. It was just for, it was just being used for vegetables and fruits and stuff, cheese and stuff like that. So it, it the refrigerator didn't come in that it wasn't that necessary, and most of the vegetables kept including I had tomatoes after 27 days that were perfect. And they had never been in the refrigerator. The eggs stayed great. I mean, I was really happy with all the stuff that I read uh, about how to do it. It it worked. So we're also um, whitewater kayakers and rafters. That's how we met, and we've done a lot of um, of of. Uh, long distance rafting trips, you know, 10 day rafting trips or something where so you're good at camping. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so this was just a 27 day camping yeah. trip. <laughs> well, except you have a stove and a refrigerator and, you know, a, 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 a table and no mosquitoes. Uh, no mosquitoes. No mosquitoes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So it was, it worked out really well. I don't think. Um, it, so what's the one thing on this boat? that you would want to change, except for your sink that uh, is a little too low. And except for making it 10 feet longer. <laughs> well, I would, if I could, um, if, if I could have designed something different, I wouldn't have had the traveler in the cockpit. I think that's that's the yeah, design that's that one. that that goes with this boat, and, and I'm not a boat designer, but having the traveler in the cockpit means that we can never really have a a, a full uh, 
uh, uh, Cockpit cover. Transition piece between the Bimini and the and the Dodger. Mm, yeah. You know, and uh, and and even even with that moved, it, the, the the associated with that is the problem that the boom is a little too low, so um, we couldn't really put a transition piece underneath the boom anyway because you you wouldn't be able to stand up. So I think that would that would be my biggest change. Um, yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Probably, probably the thing we gripe about the most. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you were in the did you go to the uh, event? We went to oh, the, yeah. the Pacific yes. Puddle Jump. We did. We well we signed up for the Pacific Puddle Jump which a whole bunch of people did. You just sign up, you don't pay anything. But and there was a rendezvous here in Morea and Tahiti. We were at it. Oh were you in this yeah. too? But they uh, managed to have uh, quite the spread on us starting here. Cool change. There's a picture of Rick and I snorkeling. And then it goes on. And we have a full page display of our boat and our food underway, pizzas and homemade bread and, and uh, our, our anchorage in Fatuiva. Fatu, yeah. And so this whole article they printed for us, which was pretty exciting, was uh, so we're famous. And then a cruiser <laughs> delivered it to us. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and we'd seen it electronically, but a cruiser delivered it to us. Some nice. friends of ours, had, one of them had gone back to the States and picked it up while she was there, so it was fun. Yeah, so Latitude 38, July issue. So, and we did actually get in in, in the Latitude 38 one other time in, in the cruising notes. Uh, about three or th actually three pages in two successive uh, issues so I guess they like cool change I think it's partly because we're a small boat so we're somewhat unique you know not many 31 footers no? across in the Pacific no yeah. no but a Pacific sea craft would be the one that you'd want if you wanted to do that in a 31 foot boat you know so yeah so we're we're real happy with her we always do lust after bigger boats, of course, but um, this way we can always invite family and friends and say, sorry, there's not enough room on the boat. <laughs> there's the hotel and, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll be with you the whole time. <laughs> so yeah. there is that advantage, but, uh, but yeah, we, we really enjoy our little boat. And Rick does a wonderful job of maintaining it, so. That's it. That's it. If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you want to watch more of us, click one of those. Where it all ends, I can't fathom my friends. I toss out my anchor.